boys, there's one thing that's holding you back from succeeding as a music producer. If you continue on your music career without taking action on the things you learned from this video, you're gonna end up like the tens of thousands of music producers who didn't make it. We've done hours of research and watched closely all the music producers who seem to have cracked the code and established themselves as icons. And we've put all their secrets to success in this easy to watch, entertaining presentation just for you. Boys, grab your fucking notepads, strap your seats, let's get into the video. Boys, the one thing that's holding you back as a music producer and stopping you from making shit tons of money with your music is branding. So in this presentation, I'm gonna break the limitations of the music industry through teaching you branding, everything about it. We're gonna start with why branding is important and how it can help you. At the end of this video, we're gonna be showing you exactly how to grow your brand with actionable steps that you can implement today. Okay, boys. This is your destiny if you do not follow any of the rules that we teach you in this video. You will spend hours and hours on music, making beats, making loops, everything, with no placements, little results. Okay, that's just how it's gonna be. That's how the music industry is set out to be. It's fucking tough. With a shit brand, you're way more likely to get ripped off by artists and labels and not get paid for any of your beats or anything that you've worked for. Trust me, they're going to finesse you. Boys, with a shit brand, you've got a maximum of two income streams to make money. Your first one is from your beats or your loops, whatever your primary focus is. And then two is if you get a placement, which you probably wouldn't, and you're gonna get ripped off anyway. So the chance of getting that money from the placement is fucking low without a brand anyway. Boys, one to two streams of income may sound nice, but as a music producer, you literally need to be making 100 beat sales a month for a whole year to sustain yourself. That's not realistic at all. That's brokey shit. And last, you're always competing with people who have more time and more talent. There's always people that are gonna be younger than you or have more time to put into their work and doing the same shit. So you're never gonna win. This page right here is the typical producer's fate unless they build a brand around them as a music producer. Boys, let's take a look at your possible future with a brand. Boys, with a brand, there are no limits to the money you can make, the connections you have, and the quality of your lifestyle. David Guetta, Calvin Harris, Metro Boomin. I'm sure all of you boys have heard their names before. They're all in the top 20 most listened to Spotify artists in the world. They've accomplished this through branding. These producers are currently outcompeting artists such as Future, Travis Scott, and Lil Baby, just as music producers. There are already up and coming producers such as Shy Beats, who are using the power of branding to fast track their net worth and name to the top of the music industry. Boys, we put our name in there as well. However, we're a level below these other guys. But through the power of branding, over time, we will join them at the top. Boys, Metro Boomin's net worth is 16 million and he's not even 30 yet. For more than a decade, Metro Boomin's been growing his brand to become more than just a producer, but a household name who can do whatever the fuck he wants. Through Metro Boomin's brand, he has an endless reach to labels, artists, and producers. And multi-million dollar deals from the likes of FL Studio and Spider-Verse. I've jumped in here to show you the signs of a bad brand. The signs of a bad brand are when there's no consistency whatsoever, leading to no engagement on their content. As you can see over here, this producer has no profile picture, no bio whatsoever, and some random posts, which are most likely type beats. Down here, this guy's posting his type beats straight on Instagram, which is straight up a red flag. Artists do not come to Instagram to find type beats, and producers don't give a shit if you're posting type beats. So don't post type beats. This isn't the content you want on your Instagram. Over here, these producers have goofy profile pictures, goofy bio, no bio here, not enough posts, and the posts are just audio clips and random black squares. Here's a YouTube channel with some weird branding, which is not appealing to the eye, not helping him at all. Boys, you don't wanna be what we like to call an internet ghost. This is a producer who has the talent they can make some hard beats, but their social media presence is dead. They have accounts that look similar to these or even no account at all, meaning they're just sabotaging their potential. So you want to avoid being an internet ghost. As you can see, boys, more bad brand examples here. Boys, you're running a music brand, not a fucking gaming channel. So get these cars and random goofy graphics out of here. And if you look closely, another flaw in these YouTube channels is that these producers love hopping niches all the time. Down here, someone's going from a little Baby beat to a Travis Scott beat, to a Weekend type beat, to a Future type beat. Looking at that, I know this guy makes no sales. <laughs> so I think you know what a bad brand looks like now. Let's get into what good brands look like. Boys, take a look at these good brands here to the right. 
They have credits, lifestyle photos, photos in the studio, story highlights, and stories active right now. Obviously, not all producers have credits. Keep in mind, credibility doesn't come just from having credits in your bar. If you have photos of you in the studio working with other artists, or if you're known to make good content and good music, that is also a form of credibility. Obviously, if you have more followers, you're gonna look more credible. But another thing is that you want your follower to following ratio to be dialed in. So as you can see here, 6,700 followers and 316 following. This is a good ratio to have. So on Instagram, producers who do well always have active stories and story highlights, posts with sick photos, and just an overall nice Instagram page to look at. In other words, their audience is always being entertained and engaged. Don't be out here posting photos of your girlfriend your mum and your dog. A lot of producers drift away from what their brand focuses on and start posting cringy shit, weird fucking reels and irrelevant content that's not helping their brand. So stay in your niche, look at what other successful producers are doing on Instagram and YouTube and keep trying to improve your brand's aesthetic over time. Here's some more examples of some good brands, boys. Rousey Beats here. His whole YouTube page is all in black and white, which is very aesthetically pleasing and something unique. He has 4.6K subscribers, consistent views and uploads very consistently. He also sticks in the same niche. As you can see, he's doing Drake, Travis Scott beats every time, no fail. This makes Rousey a credible producer with a really good brand. Same thing over here, boys. Kelly Mora sticking with the same niche, Don Tolliver and Travis Scott beats. He's got some eye-catching colors to his homepage, which make his branding look sick. And over here, there's some more stacked Instagrams that are pleasing to the eye and look reputable. Hopefully you can get a good feel for what a good brand looks like compared to a shitty brand. Now let's get into some actionable steps that you can implement as soon as you finish this video so you can start growing your brand today. So boys, listen up. This is the most important part of the video. In order to grow your brand, you need to think of Instagram as your best friend. Your Instagram page is literally your business card. It shows who you are, what you do, and it's out there for everybody to look at. So first of all, start getting sick portrait photos and videos related to your music, gym, fitness, lifestyle, everything. These can go in for your stories, your highlights, your posts, and it makes your Instagram look sick. If you look at our Instagram down here, we've got studio pics, we've got a couple of our loop kits showing what we do, and we've got sick travel pics as well. You do not want to branch out too far. Don't take fucking pictures of your dog. Nobody fucking cares. You need to keep your niche within music, life, lifestyle gym. If you start trying to do too many things at once, your audience starts to trickle away and they can't keep up with everything that you're doing. Third thing you need to be doing on Instagram is to be doing more. You need to be DMing others, building connections online with other producers, artists, engineers, VFX artists, anyone you can find. You can build these connections by providing value, collabing on beats, sending loops, doing cover art, whatever you can do to provide value to others and build a good connection online. For stories, you can post your opinions, your thoughts, any music you like, sick photos in your story, and you need to be doing this regularly, every day like we said before. And remember, only post things on your story that are gonna add value to the people who see it. So before you post that story, or before you do that post, Think twice. What are the people getting out of seeing this? Look boys, we realize we missed out an important piece of source that may help you. We understand that some of you who are just starting out growing your brand might not have access to studios and to artists and to collabing with artists and studios to get sick content for your Instagram. So we heard this piece of advice somewhere. Go into Google and find a music studio in your city. Try find a studio that is reasonably priced and looks sick for some photos. Grab your producer friend, an artist friend, someone who wants to rap or someone who wants to help you take photos Bring your laptop, your phone, your camera, your phone camera, whatever. Go in there, set everything up, open up FL, make sure you have a nice fit on, and then start getting sick photos and videos of the time in the studio. Boys, trust me, for your Instagram page, you're gonna look so much more credible if you have photos in the studio working with artists or working with other producers. So if you do use this tip, let us know on Instagram how it went. All right, boys, back to the video. Hi right, boys, learn to use YouTube like a G. For YouTube, you're gonna be using the exact same principles for your Instagram account. So consistent videos, content, whatever your thing is, it needs to stay niched. If you're doing type beats, stick to your Travis Scott or your Drake type beats. If you're doing tutorials, stick to your tutorials. And lastly, it needs to be eye-catching. Make sure your thumbnails are popping, your cover art looks good. Make sure the whole YouTube channel is just aesthetically pleasing to the eye. A bit of extra source for your type beaters and your loop makers. Make sure you're using a video editor to make your videos look more professional. Don't use tunes to tube for your type beats. It looks fucking queer. Back when I uploaded type beats to my channel, I used DaVinci Resolve, which is a free software, and it gets the job done. Whether you're doing a paid loop kit, a free loop kit, or a type beat, 
make sure you've got the free download or the purchase link at the very top of the description. We got this tip from one of our producer friends who does crazy sales and it does do a lot more than you think. Pair this with also a pinned comment with the exact same thing, the link to whatever you're trying to sell or do for free. By doing this, you'll notice you'll get a lot more link clicks and more people will go into your beat stars. These rules apply for type beats, loop kits, midi packs and anything else you're putting on YouTube. Keep in mind there are no shortcuts to building a brand. It takes a lot of hard work, a lot of effort, and it takes heaps of time. The reason a massive brand is so valuable and is a money-making machine is because it takes so much time and a hard effort to get there, not many people end up doing it. Boys, also keep in mind that attention equals money. The more views, the more likes, the more subscribers you get directly correlates to how many customers you have and how many people you can sell to. And always do your best to grab more attention from anywhere you can. Just like attention equals money, input equals output. The more energy, time, and effort you put into your brand, the better the results are gonna be. Boys, here are four takeaways that need to be ingrained into your head before you leave this video. Number one, creating a brand around your music is absolutely essential in order to achieve high levels of success. Number two, if we were to start our brand over from scratch, we'd put a lot of our attention into our Instagram. Look at what the top producers are doing, how are they getting attention, and how can you replicate that? Number three, start your brand today and don't expect anything for years to come. A brand takes years and years to start seeing those big results that come later. A good way to look at it though is comparing it to university. Four years of learning and unpaid hard work. However, with university, you end up with tens of thousands of dollars in debt. When growing a brand, you don't. Lastly, boys, a successful brand with influence allows you to sell anything, not just music. Just imagine if Metro Boomin dropped a clothing brand. Alright boys, it's time to get out there and start growing your brand. Come back to this video to keep those things ingrained into your head while you grow your brand. Attention equals money, input equals output. Discord, Telegram, both in description. Go join them, we'll see you in the next video.